Perfect. Okay, welcome everyone to our very first data science working group meeting of the Chaos Project. We are, of course, like all of our meetings under the uh, Chaos Code of Conduct, so uh, please be kind to each other. And with that, we do have quite an agenda. Um, if I could get people's, I see people are taking notes in there, which is fabulous. So if I get could get people's to volunteer to take some notes while we go through this, that would be fabulous because I cannot talk and take notes at the same time. Uh, so a few notes would be good. Looks like we've got a lot of things on the agenda for the first time. And we also just, I'll just point it out now, we'll talk about it at the end, but there is a space for agenda items for the next meeting. So if you have something that you think you're gonna wanna talk about next uh, in two weeks, uh, feel free to drop it, drop it there. Okay, so I'm going to start with the data science initiative work plans um, because I think looking at the looking at the list, I think most of you are familiar with the fact that we you know we have some data science stuff going on because we've talked about it in some of the other meetings and in the Slack channel. And this document is really designed for me to be accountable to everyone else and as a way for people to give me feedback on on the stuff that I'm that I'm planning on doing. So this is this is kind of this this a lot of this is the work that that I'm doing in collaboration with obviously lots of other people. Um, but what I did was I because there are some things I wanted to do to get started that I think will some of these will help feed other other things. So what I did was I just wanted to start with four things that I'm currently working on. One is one is software positioning. So historically, um, before we created this data science position, the Chaos Project had been very hands off when it came to making recommendations really about anything. It was just here, we've got tools, we have metrics, you should use them and you should figure out how to use them best in your situation, in your, in your context. <clears throat> and what we've learned is that, that that doesn't work particularly well because our tools are complex. We have a lot of metrics, which can be overwhelming for people. And they really need a little bit, a little bit more guidance. So that was part of the reason that we even created this data science position in the first place. And what I wanted to start with, even though it's um, let's be honest, this isn't really data science work, but I wanted to start with software positioning so that we could help people get the tool that's going to be most beneficial for them in the hands of, of the people that are going to benefit from it. So I've been I've been working with Sean, I've been working with Grimoire Lab teams uh, to come up with this, this positioning, uh, which I'll be honest is, is tricky because it means people who write the software admitting that one of the other tools is better than their tool at a very specific thing. So we're we're working through that right now. It's probably gonna take a few more, a few more iterations, but that's uh, that's something that I'm working on because I do want. I do want to get the right tools in the hands of the right people so that people aren't picking a tool that's not going to be suitable for them for any number of reasons. So I think that's going to be important for the project from a data science perspective uh, moving forward, which is why it's one of the things that I'm focused on. Um, look oh, here, oh, we have a data science oh, community. Oh, sorry, Sean, you have a question about the first I, one? I'll just, I'll just add to that, that yeah. I think for chaos, it's real important that we have these two tools because it makes us invulnerable or much less vulnerable to any one of the tools crashing and burning through an elephant or bus factor issue. So there's there's strength in in having both tools. Yeah, and I and think they, there's strength yeah. in having the tools be very different from each other because um, some of they them are, are yeah. better, better for others. And I think I think it's great that they're different. Like I don't I don't want both of our tools yeah. to be on the same things. I think it's I think it's great that they have some differences that that naturally work better for for certain people and yeah. certain so there's people. a yeah so there's a i think there's a mutual respect and appreciation for each other um from the software so don't view it like a competitive thing oh for sure it's just yeah uh, i wasn't i know you don't i was kind of stating to the crowd with, with yeah. positioning the two um that absolutely will to, to work through um and then a data science community look look we have one we have uh we have a working group um, we have a Slack channel, and so we'll 
will continue to to build on that. And so one of the things that I really want, and, and thanks for those of you who've added some stuff to the agenda, is I don't want it to be me talking about the work that I'm doing within the Chaos Project for Data Science. I want all of us who are doing data science-y things to be talking about what we're, what we're working on, how we're using the data, what kind of insights we're getting. Uh, so that we can all learn from each other. So I really want this working group to really be a big part of the, the data science community for, for the chaos project. And then understanding challenges. So we, we know, uh, based on talking to people, that uh, people find some of our, our software and our metrics challenging. It's um, The tools are complex. The, the metrics are overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, and so what I wanted to do was start by understanding some of those challenges. And then this, I think, I think especially this piece of the, you know, kind of the one of four things that I'm getting started with, this piece will, I think, help us moving forward because we can take the results from the survey. So far we have eight of them. Um, so we really need to get the word out and get other people to, to respond to that survey because um, uh, while the, the eight responses are interesting, I think we need uh, a lot more data than that. So I would encourage you to send it out to other people that you know use the software and encourage them to complete the survey as well so that we can uh, get a bit more, a bit more data. Um, and then we'll take that and you know, now that we've distributed the survey, the survey will run until at least the 12th of September because I'll be on holiday the first 12 weeks of September. So I'll take a look at the number of responses when I get back. And if we have a good number of responses, we'll close the survey on the 12th. Uh, if we don't, we'll do another push to get some, some survey responses. So that's kind of the, the timing for, for the survey. And then this last one really is, is kind of an on, ongoing bit, which is just, you know, the evangelism of, you know, not just like the data science efforts within the chaos project, but, you know, evangelizing our tools, how to use them, how to draw insights out of the data that you can get from, from the chaos metrics and the chaos tools. So we're, um, we're going to revitalize the chaos cast podcast. I have a meeting with Elizabeth and Georg next week to figure out exactly how we're going to do that. So, uh, so that's one thing that we'll do, and we'll have probably a number of data science topics along with other things in the, in the podcast. Um, I'm going to look for additional opportunities to present about chaos and related topics at conferences. And I would encourage all of the rest of you to do similar things where you can talk about the insights that you're getting from chaos tools and metrics and, and talk about the work that you're doing within, within the community. That would be, that would be great. Uh, blog posts. Um, I'll write some. It'd be great if some of you wanted to write some and and talk about uh, you know things that that you're finding interesting and you know things that other people other people can do as well. And then just find other opportunities to to promote our work. Uh, and then we've got this whole like future deliverables and things to think about. So these are things that came in either as comments to this or things that you know people were talking about in the Slack channel. Uh, so there's a, a few things there. And, and if you're interested, there's also, this is partly to keep me honest, this is this is what I committed to when we um, put this role together. So I, I will continue to revisit this just to make sure that this is kind of the, the three-year plan for the data science work, since that's uh, we have funding for three years. So um, so this is what I've what I've kind of agreed to do. So feel free to have a, a browse, browse through that as well if you're if you're interested. Any questions on the software, uh, or sorry, at the data science initiative work plans? Okay, I think most people have seen these because we've talked about them in the uh, in the Slack channel. Okay, so we have. Uh, we, we talked about the survey, so this is my reminder to, to send that out to, to other people. We do have eight responses so far, so that's, that's where we are with, uh, with the survey. Um, Gary, you're next up on the agenda. Hello, I'm here. Um, I real, I was trying to scrape my brain and remember what I was wanted to ask about, uh, this working group. And so I'm going to interject now and ask, um, with if we have um additional work that we'd like to propose for some of these tools like grimoire lab or auger 
would this be an appropriate place to do that? Or should we have that conversation on GitHub or what do you think? Um, I think it depends. I, I think we can certainly have that conversation here. Uh, if if there's some stuff that that you want the, the tools to do differently, uh, eventually it should probably end up being an issue in, in the appropriate repo. So if it's, uh, you know, something about Augur, we'd file an issue in the Augur repo and same thing with Grimoire Lab. But I would say if we want to talk about it and brainstorm and come up with some some thoughts about what's what's working, what's not, I think this is uh, this is a good forum for that. Okay, cool. I expect to have plenty of content um, here because I have lots of things that I want to do regarding viability. Um, cool. So yay! And are nice you using group. are you using Augur or Grimoire Lab? I mean, uh, you I, I'm using content. Grimoire for now, which could be wrong. Um, and maybe that's a good uh, conversation topic uh, since now I have a little bit more breathing room than I thought I would. I used Grimoire because I'm like, I know how to use this thing. And like, maybe I can talk about that later. Okay. Um, what I think what I think would be helpful for the entire software ecosystem is if you bring in questions to this group, like these, these are data science questions that I want to answer. Okay. Um, I think each, like each software team can provide, uh, here's how you get that from the tool, this tool. Uh, they may not, so there may be things that you're trying to ask that are not metrics yet. And so there could be a metrics pipeline, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, Don, I think you probably don't want this to turn into a Grimoire Lab or Augur discussion entirely. No, but, um, but like you said, it's, it's a, it's a place where we can talk about some of the challenges that we have and, you know, in pulling insights out of these, these tools. Um, but yeah, we won't spend, we won't spend days and days and days talking, talking about the tools, but, uh, we can have a conversation about it and then work to make sure that we get the, uh, issues filed in the, in the correct place. All right. Uh, so clearly I've linked to the wrong, um, thing with my next topic, but I wanted to, let me fix that link, but, uh, Grimoire Lab has this uh, fantastic thing called Grimoire Lab Sigils, which, um, as I understand, uh, contains all of the information required to create a dashboard based on uh, that particular uh, metric or uh, thing that you might be tracking. And so this is really useful for like the easy get started of Grimoire Lab, provided that you are indeed using Kibana and Kibiter. Um, when I fired this up with open search, um, because I, I see from issues and stuff that the project is moving towards that direction, I noticed that open search in particular isn't super well uh, documented here or reflected in terms of like parity between Gibbeter. So I wanted to bring that up. Uh, this might be a too specific for this group kind of uh, discussion, and it might be something that I need to bring up on the um, repo, but I wanted to bring it up and say like, do we plan on kind of keeping this going or is that a question for, for the team? Yeah, well, absolutely. So. We don't actually have anyone from the Grimoire Lab team okay. on call. I can, I can say that when I talk about one of the strengths of Grimoire Lab, this, the, I always call it sigils, but it, it's sigil. How do you say it? Sigils. Sigils. I mean, one of its, one of the strengths of Grimoire Lab are that they, these, there's basically 70, dashboards that answer questions that people have had in the past. And I think you could construe them as what we now call metrics models. They're collections of metrics presented together in a way that people have previously wanted to consume them. So I view it as an asset and I have a strong suspicion though, no knowledge that there's a documentation update issue because I think, I think a lot of people know the uh, elastic search to open source Urban search transition was a forced, unpleasant one for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and I do know the the Kibiter stuff that um, they they forked Kibana ages ago. Um, so, so yeah, I'm not sure how easy that piece is going to be to migrate from from uh, Kibiter to uh, Open Search dashboards, which is the the equivalent. Yeah. Um, I know that they've kind of replaced the Elasticsearch stuff with with OpenSearch, which was uh, a much easier job because it was kind of a drop in replacement. Mm -hmm. if, if I had to guess, I would say that there's it's probably a lot more work to replace to replace this with the OpenSearch dashboard just because it, it was forked quite a long time ago. 
So I don't think it would be a drop-in replacement. I don't know what their plans are, though, to be honest. That would be an interesting question for the Grimoire Lab team, whether they plan on replacing it or whether they plan on continuing to maintain um, Kibitter as a separate project. Cool. I will raise the question. Okay. Yeah, and that one, I think, ask it in Slack and let us know okay. what you learn. And look, yeah. we don't watch Slack ourselves. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, and then Gary, you had another one as well. I did. This is somewhat related. So uh, sigils is a great place to see what is traceable in Grimoire Lab, um, but that information isn't easily surfaced anywhere, uh, anywhere else, I should say. So if I go and I say, oh, I really want this particular metric, that would be great to have this metric. I can scroll to the bottom of the page and like nine times out of 10, it'll either say tools providing this metric, here are some tools, or... Um, nothing. And I assume that it's not being tracked anywhere by anything. And then I like look up third party tools or whatever. And so I feel like it would be useful to have a list of what metrics are traceable by which tools, um, samples for those tools linked directly from that artifact. Um, and then being able to selfishly for myself, I already have this on my end in a Google sheet for like the metrics that I know I want for viability, which ones I can trace with which tools. And so like being able to prioritize that work against other metrics and traces is useful for me because it's going to set priority for like, I think lib years should be the next one that I try to figure out how we can integrate into the tool. Mm -hmm. And maybe that doesn't belong in a spreadsheet that's owned by me. Maybe that's a something that could belong um, in a more open place for, for the chaos community. Yeah, that's a really, really good question. Um... I would say there are a couple of pieces to that, right? So, so one is if if you see a metric and it doesn't have a tool um, listed at the bottom that you know actually has that metric, um, we should be doing PRs to those to those metrics because in some cases the metrics definition was was ages ago and right. um, now the tool has it and maybe it didn't at the time. Or in a lot of cases, the person developing the tool didn't talk to the right person um, working on the project to know that it was also included uh, in, in the tool already. Uh, because like I said, these tools are complex and depending on, on who you ask, you might get slightly slightly different answers. So I would say PRs to those metrics from that standpoint would be would be really would be really great. Um, I, I would... But maybe we need, maybe we also need, need something else. Like we have a metrics tracking uh, spreadsheet uh, where we have every single metric that's been created within the chaos project and what mm -hmm. its status is. And so I wonder, I wonder if there would be some benefit to either having, having the tools listed on the tracking sheet or yeah, so yeah I'm, or, not sure. or, I'm not quite or, sure what to do with that. Go ahead, Sean. I have my, my thinking, I, my little hobby horse for a number of years was we need to make the metrics definition links consistent so that the tools can point to them and we accomplished that earlier this year and so with that we could put it in this we could certainly create references in the spreadsheet but with with stable urls for the metric definitions it now allows tool makers it allows grimoire lab and auger to create like in our case links directly in our api that indicate where you get this chaos metric um and in grimoire lab could put the same thing on a Kibiter or whatever sigil, sigils uh, dashboard. And we could round trip that so that we could show how to see those metrics um, in the in the metric definition itself. There could be a, a link to the tools and specifically where they provide those metrics. And we have the foundation with those stable URLs where we can, we can do that now. And so okay. I think it's an, a really important idea because people need to be able to follow the map from these metrics to the tools, whichever tool it is. And I think now we're well positioned to do that. Yeah, awesome. and we also we also have loads of metrics that are defined or that are implemented in the tools and not not even defined within the chaos project. So that's kind of the, the flip side to that. Um, Callie, you've got your hand up. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if this is 100% a fit into this um, mm -hmm. spreadsheet, but we do, we as in like the Aspen project with the 8-knot front end, um, host a decent amount of those, uh, like or a decent amount of the chaos visualizations. And um, I don't know if 
that should be represented on that spreadsheet or where we should be able to represent that for just a little bit of context if people aren't aware of Project Aspen and 8 Not Aspen is just an overall like project around doing data science work run open source communities, hence why we're here. And then the 8 Not application itself is a front end to Augur. So we take Augur and being able to create visualizations doing using a Python stack to be able to do some more like data science, like being able to capitalize on data science libraries and like more Python heavy stack. But I'll put that in the chat, at least for now, you can see some of those visualizations. We have a few more coming out in the next couple of weeks, but I would say that I'm actively working on a lot of the chaos visualizations into 8 knot. Thanks. That actually made that an agenda item, just similar to Gary's sigils question that, that you know, 8 knots a less established project. However, I think um, they're using data from Augur to build some really nice dashboards and dash and plotly. Um, and, and I'm, you know, I've I've introduced the idea of implementing chaos metrics models, and they we eight not already in, implements some chaos metrics in their dashboard. So that's a I don't want to put anyone from that team on the spot, but I definitely want to steer some of it that way. <laughs> yeah, and I think for any of the chaos mo like metrics models, pretty much how we go about doing visualizations is that we have issues that are open for a visualization request. And so we can see, we can open as many requests as we are open as many issues for each of the metrics models that we see could be um, implemented in eight not So it need to all be just stuff that is involves auger data. So if it's outside the GitHub, data collection then it won't be applicable at this point in eight knot but that would be the only limit the major limitation i'm just going to add this here so that we don't we don't lose track of it because i feel like that's something that um could require a bit more a bit more work so i've added it to the future deliverables and things to think about section of the uh the data science initiative uh document just so we just so we don't lose track of it um, Gary, was there anything else on that particular topic or we could... Nope, I, I feel good about that. Okay. The discussion. Yeah, thank you. No, it's a really good point. Um, so the other thing we have on the agenda is the 8 knot uh, Aspen discussion. So Sean, you put this here. Um, I'm happy to unshare if one of you wanted to kind of show it or do some demo or something. Yeah, I'd, I'd, to put, you I'd on put it on there. I put it on there because I wanted to make this group aware of, of, of the tooling, but um, uh, Callie and James lead it. So, um, I, or, and Brian works, or they work for Brian. So I'll kind of let them decide what they do or don't want to present right now, because I'm sort of putting my collaborators on the spot here. I can do it. I'm fine with doing like a basic demo walkthrough. Um, Got it up so, right now. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Let you share. That. Yeah, I said I have it all up as well, so I'm not. I'm good either way. Have to navigate this share screen thing. Yeah, because once you try to share screen, you can't see any other controls. <laughs> right. Oh, actually, Zoom doesn't have permissions to share. So Callie, you have the ability oh. to agree. Yeah, let's see. Oh yeah, I do have. Um, yeah, this will be, do a slight demo of this, but adds a little bit of a background. I'll probably pull up the um, GitHub repository as well. But as like a overview of what this is, is that each, eight not application. So this is a hosted version that we have publicly available. People can request any repositories to be loaded into here to be accessible by the search bar. But you can kind of think of it as you have a Augur instance and this plugs, this is a front end that plugs directly into that Augur instance. So I know Sean has a few eight not instances that plug into some different Augur instances. And so it's 
something that can be repeated and customized to each person's like needs, but this is just the singular public instance of it. And so we have just start going back more to the welcome page that kind of describes the different pages. We're probably gonna update these a little bit towards, we've developed a lot of visualizations since we first decided on like these specific pages. And it describes how 8Not works, how to use Plotly, and how to log into an Augur account because we're able to use a Augur front end so you can log into this, be able to make your own user group. So then if you have certain set of repositories that you always want to see visualizations on, you can have that as a user group and that's readily available to you. Um, but since this is the chaos group, I'll go directly to the chaos page. Um, and these are some of the different chaos visualizations that we have implemented over time. This is one of the more recent ones is looking at the contributors by different actions. I would say, though, that some of the chaos visualizations, they're not always exactly like like to the T to the um, chaos definition. Sometimes there's a little bit of variability. For example, we just did the project velocity visualization. And we're allowed, we have like a couple more toggles and a little bit different formal definition whenever it comes to what like defines like the y axis for that visualization, for example. But yeah, these are some of the different visualizations. I'll see if James, is there anything else that you think that I should cover that's important for kind of a basic demo? Hypothetically doing um like just showing the groups because that's a lot of the auger front end stuff but that's not essential if you can just go into it but yeah you can use the user groups this is i've logged into mine so let's see i have c dolphy and so i can see all the different um user groups that i have and so this has like a set of different um i don't want to do sandbox because that's a lot I do incubating that will add all of the I defined that there and so if you have a user group and you don't know exactly which all of the repositories are you can get that listed out as well but that's kind of the basic overview let me see if I have the um just to look on to the repository for a second the repository is also set up to where it's pretty um I didn't think of the right word to describe it, but it's kind of like a different pieces. So each visualization is its own um, Python file. And there is a template to be able to create a new visualization that tells you exactly line by line what you would need to do to be able to create a new visualization. Um, and so, for example, we can go through the if we go into the chaos page, go into the visualizations, you can kind of see the exact structure of it. And it all is based off of this visualization template that gives you the list of different things that you need to do and how to directly use a query to Augur to be able to populate a visualization. And this is using the um, Python or the Plotly and Dash stack. And we're using a lot of Pandas as well to do the, pre, the data pre-processing. So that's yeah. the... <laughs> and I think... And I think yeah, I, the hope I have is um, expand, you know, well, expanding the the contributor community for data science and software within Chaos, and that uh, these this tool might be one place where um, we can ease a path toward uh, contributions. You know, one of many. But the other thing I'm I'm I don't wondering. Know if Kelly wants that. One thing I'm wondering, and I know I've I've mentioned this to, to Kelly and James before, um, who have pointed out uh, graciously that they are not designers. Um, is there any is there any chance that we can get some design help to make these more high contrast? I'll be honest, I have not used any of the eight knot visualizations and presentations because I'm afraid that people aren't going to be able to see them on the low res um, presentation screens. So right now I've avoided using anything from 8Not in a presentation, despite the fact that I would really, really, really love to, because I, I just don't think people will be able to, to see it very well. Whoops, Callie, you're on mute. Yes, if you can open an, an issue to just, I guess it's like, 
we are again we aren't de designers but being able to understand like okay like even being like oh it's low res i don't know if they're going to be able to see this or that like getting a little bit more detail even if we don't get direct design help if it's like this color isn't visible on a like on this type of screen or we need more contrast between this and that those are small changes that we would be able to implement i just don't know what to look for um so that type of feedback would be immensely helpful um so then i would it'd be great for you to be able to use it i don't want the color scheme to be the reason that holds back people getting to use these visualizations is another thing that is nice about how Plotly works is that there's you have all of the ability to kind of change the view as well as take any specific like snapshot of a visualization and just download it as a as a PDF or not a PDF but as an image if you need to put it into a slide deck or anything like that. Cool, I will absolutely do that. Uh, does that uh, issue go in um, Aspen or eight not? 8 knot is a repository in the Aspen organization. So yeah, okay. so yes to both, but it's an 8 Okay, so it's, it's in the 8 knot, 8 knot repo. Yes. Okay, perfect. We'll do. We had the same observation done, and one of our developers actually created a branch with higher contrast colors. Oh, so can we? No, no, you can't because they haven't been updated and I would rather have the team reach that conclusion and have a consistent presentation than build. I don't a... think we've even been, I haven't, I haven't seen the, I don't know if I haven't, I don't even think I've seen this. So I know, yeah. I knew that there was a, they were we talking were, about we, doing this, but if you could share it over, that'd be good. Yeah. Too. yeah if we and could we share went... it so that, so that Callie and James can see what it is yeah. that, um, what we, that looks like, we... why, why the higher contrast um, is, is important. I'll do that. We did switch back to dev during some recent troubleshooting, which has got the original color scheme, but I'll just merge dev into those because the only thing different is the colors. And I'll I'll make a sample available to Callie and James. Cool. John, and I know that it's John who did that. If he has the bandwidth to make a PR for that, that would be ideal. Yeah. yeah, most of the colors, it's like one place you need to change, like the color hex. That's one thing that is nice about how like Plotly and everything is set up, that it's you have to, for our, to change every visualization, you just need to change a singular list and it'll update all of them. Yeah, that's really cool. Yep. Yeah, he found it pretty fast. It was pretty, pretty fast activity, actually, for him to create those different examples. Sweet. Yeah, that would be great because I'm I'm also not a designer and I'm not great at color, um. So yeah, if somebody else has done that work, that would be that would be fab. Okay, so I think we have. Oh, Sean dropped some some links to it in the. Uh, I put the branches in there, but they'll they're not okay. deployed. I'm working on pull requests right now into Dev to um to see if we can um, just okay. provide a demo. Yeah. Fair enough. So we have, we have reached the end of our agenda. Is there anything else people want to talk about today? Okay. How about agenda items for the meeting that we're having in two weeks on August 30th? People have some some things that we'd like to talk about in that meeting. I mean, if nobody has anything else, like any type of like applicable, like these are the type of questions that I'm trying to answer with data. If we don't have any other topics, having those type of people have questions where we can have an open discussion, because a lot of times getting from I have a question to how this would be implemented and as a graph, like that's where I always kind of rant that that's the majority of the work whenever it comes to like building these visualizations, no matter what platform you are using, that huge portion of it is can be applied in both in both or any space. So people have questions that they're trying to answer about their communities or just anything. I think this is the data science, a data science group. So we can talk about data, how to answer questions from a data science perspective. 
That's a great topic. And so I might end up having a visualization that I will want to demo. We'll see how it's a little bit complex and I don't know if it'll be ready in two weeks, but if it is that I'd want to demo just to see how interpretable it is to people um, and get some feedback. Cool. Yeah, I can, uh, I can also talk about um, obsolescence is another metric that I haven't seen anywhere, but that I'm starting to think about and track um, formally. As, as part of that discussion? Wow, I can't spell obsolescence. Yeah, it's a really tough word I've learned as I've had to type <laughs> it. Um, yeah, it can be part of that discussion. We can bring it up there. I'll also chuck in if we're going to talk about metrics and things we need to visualize. Oh boy, Callie, viability. I am excited to bring that up to you. Please give me all of the ideas. I find it a lot easier. It's like we have different ideas and visualizations that we kind of have in our backlog, but it's a lot easier to one, be motivated and as well as understand, okay, like being like, this is a question, this is the application of it. And it makes the path a lot clearer to be able to build them. Totally. And if, Sean, have we, have we, talked much about implementing the the metrics models in in eight not because we have individual metrics I've, from some of the models but has there have we had that discussion I've, i literally uh suggested that idea to brian in an email last friday so he's had a lot of time to really think deeply about it and i talked mm -hmm. with callie about it yesterday so she's also had a lot of time to think deeply about it i I'm, I think we're still working on getting everyone's collective head around what a metrics model is. Um, yeah, I believe that was my really fast yes. question for yeah. you. Like, what <laughs> yeah. are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've my sent Callie... Was we have five minutes. We uh -huh. need to make another meeting to be able to what this yeah. is. Yeah. I, I've yeah. I would assume the, the answer Callie. is yes, and, but... I need, yeah, I need to... They're effectively collections of metrics displayed in the same page. Um, to, to be the, to be sure about it. And they usually arise from actual practical ways that people use chaos metrics in the world. However, um, there, there is a bit more to the concept than that, but I think, I think you'd think them that think of them as ways that the community has thought about putting metrics together on a page that could be useful. And I think it's especially Don, you can correct me if I'm off here, but I think it's, I think it's especially been driven by the ASPO communities in terms of what metrics models emerge. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know exactly how they how they started. I wasn't really that involved in the metrics model discussions when they I mean, when they kicked off, but I know that um yeah, it's certainly beyond beyond just the OSPOs. Well, and a lot I of those discussions came more. out of the, the Asia community, I think, because they were some of the ones that were starting to look at yeah. it. Yeah. No, you're right. That is where it uh, originated. Brian, good timing. No, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Sorry. Um, yeah, I definitely need to hear more because this sounds like to me, like what I had envisioned is the original point, which would be here is a collection of metrics that will show you the answer to a specific question or a set of questions. Um, it sounds mm -hmm. like it's more than that. So that's where I think my um, confusion lays. Uh, no, it, it's basically a collection of metrics. Yeah, like okay. like a model a model model might be answering one question that needs like five or six metrics to really paint the full picture. Okay. Yeah. So so I can give you an example. There's a starter project health metrics model, which is the one that I created, which has the metrics that I've used at VMware, and it's designed to be just like it says a starter project health metrics. So it's like four metrics to get you started so that you can start looking at the health of your community and then decide where you need to drill down what other metrics you need. But it is it is literally four metrics. It's like a time to first response. It's, you know, are you sustaining the project like closing PRs? Uh, mm -hmm. Are you releasing fixes with security vulnerabilities, fixes and, you know, feature releases? And uh, a bus factor, basically, do you have enough contributors um, that if something happened to one of them, the project could sustain? And so it's like four things that cover kind of a wide swath of project health things. And it's probably one of the easier ones to implement. Sure. With the exception they... of Aug Does Augur have the release data in it yet, Sean? I'm right now I'm pulling it from the API, the GitHub API. Um, Augur does have release data and, and okay. has for some time. I, I do have 
there's issues with if you have a really old project, sometimes GitHub doesn't make it all the history available. Um, but okay, but, well, I'll yeah. I'll figure that out on my on my own and update my scripts so that I'm pulling that data from Augur so that we could do something similar. Uh, with on the metric models, this is a really good timing for that because James and I separately had a whole conversation about two days ago of being like, okay, now that we have our infrastructure there, we're, that's how we've always envisioned the different pages of eight not to be would be to answer a specific question. Like one of the pages I didn't show was a company page, which looks at answering like organizational diversity from a bunch of different perspectives. Because if you don't know exactly who is in what company, you can't really answer that question the best you have to kind of do your best shots so this is a good timing for that because we were just talking about how we want to make more deliberate pages now that we overview doesn't really we have too many visualizations and overview isn't that helpful a more specific page names and stuff is better cool i just dropped a link to the metrics models in um in the the minutes so if you want to have a look at that, you can see what models exist. You can look at that starter project health metrics models because that one's easy. And Sean just dropped a whole bunch in our inboxes, Kelly and James. <laughs> well done, Sean. I'm a helper. I, I also offered to open the issues for each of them. <laughs> so cool. Um, and I I have I have code that does. <laughs> The starter project health metrics model that I'm about to put on on GitHub. Um, so That'll with the great. exception of the releases, and then you can tell me how I can improve it because uh, yeah, I'm not a professional developer, uh, but I can make it. I can make the data happen, which is what I've done with those scripts. So I I do welcome feedback on those. I'll I'll send you the link to the repo once I get that stuff pulled up. That'd be awesome because if they're already implemented, I'm assuming is it in like a notebook format or or is it in? It's in a Python it? script. It's a Python oh, script. Perfect. Okay, this if it's in Python, there's a decent chance that we'll be able to just take that and be able to implement it in eight knots, so then it's um, modular. Yeah, and then just let me know what you improve, so I can I can make those same improvements in mine. Cool. OK, so what I did was I added these agendas, agenda items to two weeks because like we kind of started talking about them, but I feel like there's a lot more we need to dig into. So we've added an open discussion about the questions that people have, and I've added kind of sub bullets to that for obsolescence and viability metrics models. And then we can also have a bigger discussion about metrics models in uh, in eight knot. Um, and I've dropped a couple of links in there, but that should help you get up to speed on what metrics yeah. models are. And then maybe we can have a bigger bigger discussion about that in, in two weeks. Um, also, I encourage people, this, this is not a, like I said before, this is not a Dawn talking to people. Um, so add your agenda items anytime, just feel free to go in. And if I haven't created the, you know, the placeholder text for, for the next meeting, feel free to just create it and, and add your stuff to the agenda. So I, I prefer for these to be really collaborative and for people to, to add the things that they want to talk about. That, that helps me a lot. Cool. Awesome. Well, we're running up against time. So I think I, unless somebody has any other quick burning topics, I think we'll probably, probably wrap it up. Yeah. Tom's uh, tribulations of, of working in a hotel room <laughs> with his family <laughs> in the chat. Just want to make sure I don't get anything recorded that I don't think we want on this camera. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. Well, Sean, enjoy your trip back. Um, All right. Oh, well, thanks. And I will see the rest of you in the data science channel and various, various other places. All right. Great. Thanks, All everybody. Right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.